Welcome inside the RX Muscle Studios for another episode of Ask Dave, better known as Hashtag Ask Dave, brought to you by, as always, by Species Nutrition. Visit SpeciesNutrition.com. I'm your host, Sadiq Faruqi. Glad you can join us on this Wednesday, September 21st in the year 2016, our first show back from Olympia weekend, and what an experience it was as we now bring in Dave Palumbo. Dave A jam-packed Olympia weekend. We landed Wednesday night, left Sunday night, and I think it's safe to summarize it by saying it was literally work, 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 work. And I I took something home with me, a fucking nasty cold. (laughs) I I, I never get sick. The only time I get sick is when I go to the Arnold or the Olympia because there's a thousand people touching you and shaking your hands and taking pictures with you. And I got it. It got me. I I almost went two years without getting sick, and this year I got sick. So, Um, But, yeah, I had a great time. And, you know, sometimes the best day of the whole Olympia weekend is the Sunday after. You know, we didn't go home until we took the red eye home at 1030 that night, and we got to spend the whole day, you know, visiting people. We went to the City Athletic Club where uh, our good friend Jay owns that, and uh, obviously Iris Kyle and Hide Yamagishi have the, the body cafe in there. We got to see them. We got we saw all the photo shoots with Phil Heath and Jose Raymond and Flex Lewis and all the athletes were there. So we got some pictures with them. We got to talk to everyone. Uh, I saw Bruce from Quest there. It was like a, a reunion. And then we went before the airport. I want to get some food for the plane. And where we stopped, we went to Larissa Rice's Protein House. And we got Larissa App. She happened to just walk in there when we were in there. We saw some other bodybuilders in there as well. We got some good food. And so, you know, even though the Olympia was really what we went for, sometimes, like I said, the day after, because all the work is kind of done, and it's like, ah. But, yeah, you're right. We didn't stop from the moment we got there. Starting Wednesday night, uh, I ate, you know, I ate pizza almost every single meal because every time we got back to the hotel, nothing was open except the food court. And uh, I mentioned that on my radio show, and and I got an email from someone who owns a pizza place in, in Vegas. And they said, next year when you go there, We'll deliver pizza to you guys, and we'll keep you well fed. Sweet. So that's awesome, and uh, I love when uh, – I forget the name of the pizza place. I should have written it down, but uh, I love when people uh, or listeners and fans of the show help us out when we're on location. It, it means a lot to us. But uh, just ultimately, Dave, just if you can give a minute summary of the weekend that it was and just – Some of your initial reactions, Uh, obviously so much of the show going into it was about the comeback of Kevin Lavroni and then of course the deep lineup that we were going to have in the men's open class, of course Phil Heath winning his sixth straight Sandow, uh, some controversy in the other departments and the other divisions uh, including Classic Physique which you're going to make a video on later on, but just your light impressions about the weekend that was. Um, I became, uh, my, my prediction that Kevin Lavroni would win ruined me because Lavroni never showed me his legs. And I, and I did that whole video last night, if, for those of you who haven't seen, uh, with the, my impressions of the Lavroni appearance. Now I hear Kevin's deciding he wants to continue going on. And, and I, I knew that would happen. Uh, Kevin's hooked as we all get hooked. And I think he says, well, now I can bring my legs up. So I think Lavroni up there was still a great, great um, I guess, moment when we saw him posing, you know, under the lights on the big stage again. So all the fans love that. Phil Heath bringing one of his most dominating looks to the stage. That was another super highlight, I think. William Bonac placing fifth, which no one expected, was a huge moment. Uh, Flex Lewis repeating as champion, obviously, it has to be up there as well. A- Ashley Kaltwasser losing the Bikini Olympia title to Courtney King. That was, a, that was the only upset of the, of the reigning Mr. Olympia or Miss Olympia. And then, of course... The first ever classic physique Olympia, where we saw Danny Hester controversially defeat Arash Rabar, and I'll give my analysis of this later in the week. Uh, obviously, I've been friends with Danny for many years, and he's, he was competing from before I was competing. He's been competing for four decades now since it's the eighties, and uh, obviously, it's great to see him as the champ. But I don't necessarily dis- agree with the decision. I think Arash Rabar uh, really deserved that. Which, I, speaking of Arash Rabar. Uh, Juliana Malacarney, which for those of you who don't know, is his girlfriend who won the uh, uh, phys- Women's Physique Olympia. She got this big glass trophy, and it must have weighed like 40 pounds, this thing. And she dropped it on his foot and by accident, not purposely. And his foot got split open. He had to take an ambulance to the hospital. He has the same shoe I have on. The same injury, just like I almost chopped my foot off and something fell on it. He has the same injury with the same stitches. And when the interview comes out to Johnny Shot Saturday night, you'll see us, our feet next to each other. We have the same shoe on. So uh, 
that was uh, that was you know that was a Rosh's week I mean, for you. You know, losing the Olympia and then cracking his foot open. And uh, you know, Oksana Grishina obviously winning the fitness Olympia. You know, again, uh, you know, I've been predicting she was going to be Miss Olympia. Now she's Miss Olympia and dominating as we knew. And Latoria Watts, same thing. You know, we predicted she'd be Miss Olympia one day, and she's just won her second Olympia. So, uh, you know, defeating uh, Candice Lewis, who was really good, pushed her to the <laughs> limit. And Nicole Nicole Wilkins had to settle for fourth. So there was a lot of you know a lot of excitement. I thought the competition was great. Everyone was in shape. I thought Robin Chang put a great show on. I think uh, it was very professional looking. Uh, I enjoyed myself. Uh, for, you know, we had press seats, so it was a, a lot more enjoyable to watch the show that way. I didn't have to walk around like I didn't belong there anymore. So overall, I thought the weekend was great. Obviously, The Rock announcing that next year the Olympia would be on CBS Sports uh, is a huge announcement too, and I, I hope it comes true. So again, if you want to see all of our Olympia footage, our Olympia videos, interviews, analysis, it is available right now on rxmuscle.com and the Rx Muscle YouTube channel. On rxmuscle.com, click on the menu item, contest coverage, Olympia. You'll see our full line of videos. We start today on the Muscle Central Forum on rxmuscle.com and go to Sean Corrigan. Dave, at what level would you recommend a client starting using your SEO protocol and what is your protocol? Do you have a set level of muscle size and density required before you think SEO is worthwhile? Also, any tips on growing calves as mine are very stubborn and genetically my family isn't blessed with them? Well, he's talking about site injection oils, you know, site enhancement oils, if you want to call it that. And as you know, um, and I've done a, a, I've done a video on Synthol specifically, there's only two products that are legitimate products on the market, one being the Chris Clark synthesized pump and pose, which is the original, and then there's the painless pumps. And I sell both of those at DavePalumbo.com because I believe in both of those products and there is science behind them. Um, how you do it, and I've told people this before, I offer my services. If anyone wants to know the protocol that I recommend so that it doesn't look ridiculous but that it looks good and natural and, and that you get some nice results from, you can, you can email me at huge285 at AOL.com and I will send you the protocol. Uh, I have protocols for, to be honest with you, arms and calves work the best. They respond the best because they're small, round muscle groups. Shoulders work well. You can't, don't, can't overdo shoulders. I have a protocol for shoulders. I, have a, I even have a protocol for chest, which is a, a mild protocol. Uh, and I have, uh, what do I have? What did I leave out? That's it. So chest, delts, calves, and arms. You shouldn't be doing quads, okay? Quads don't look good. They get lumpy looking. Uh, you really shouldn't do lats either because they're going to look kind of lumpy. I tell people to put their regular gear in their lats. So um, if anyone has, uh, you know, wants to know, you can send it to me. It, it's hard for me to give you, like, uh, instructions here without showing you diagrams. So send me an email, and I'll send you the, the protocol. Let's go to the trademark. Dave, you guys did an incredible job covering the O. Thank you, and we thank you for that compliment. Uh, two questions. The first, we'll ask this one first. How much lean muscle mass can you gain from Anavar, and how long of a cycle should you be on with it, and is PCT needed? Well, women could gain a lot of, you know, women can gain a lot of lean muscle on Anavar because their receptors are much more receptive than men's are. For men, it's kind of weak. I mean, probably guys could put a couple pounds of muscle on with it, especially if you've never done a cycle. You could probably put five or seven pounds of muscle on. But once, you know, start cycling, Anavar is really weak for men. For women... I really recommend, that's the only thing I really recommend that women take because it's the only thing that really has no side effects. Women could put on, you know, five, seven, ten pounds of muscle on Anavar and, and easy. So, um, you know, dosages vary, obviously. For women, five to ten milligrams a day is enough. Some women will go up to 20. I don't think you need that much, but a guy's 20 to 30 micrograms, uh, milligrams per day. So there is a there is a difference, but once again, Anavar, you know, more, taking more and more and more of it is not going to make you grow better. It's just going to make you feel sick because Anavar can kill your appetite a little bit. Uh, it's a little, it's very mildly liver toxic. It's because it's oral, but it's 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 kind of uh, compared to like Anadrol, to Anabol, it's kind of like taking M and M's, as I always like to say. You know, it's not really that bad for you. As far as PCT, you really don't need it with Anavar. If you don't go crazy with the dosages, it doesn't really suppress your natural testosterone production. So it's unnecessary, but you know, it doesn't hurt to take a little HCG after you, after you do a cycle of Anavar. His second for question. For men, for men, that is. So his second question was based on his current progression. Where do you see Dallas McCarver a year from now? I put a picture on my Instagram. I don't know if you guys saw it, uh, of Dallas the day after the show. And uh, Johnny should have the picture. And he looks like an absolute freak in the gym. This kid is so big, um, his his frame is big. He, he he looks like his 
his bone structure grew. I don't know. You know, sometimes when you're young, growth hormone will make your bone structure grow. I don't know. He's he's like they call him big country. I, I guess he like maybe he's from the country. I don't know why they call him that, but he, this this kid looks like he should be bailing hay. I mean, he's just enormous. Even when you see him in the lineup, he he's about six two, so he's taller than everyone else. A lot taller. Most of the guys are only like five nine, five ten. He's a lot taller and he's very wide and he just sticks out on stage and he's impressive looking. You know, I think he needs to bring his legs up to match that upper body and he can use a little more back. But I think in two, three years, he's going to be a dangerous competitor. He's got that Paul Dillette structure almost. You're watching Ask Dave on RxMuscle.com. Let's go to GCT2000. Dave, hate this show. Thinking about using Clenbuterol to help fat loss. Will this up my anxiety? If so, will it get better while using it? Sorry for all the sniffling. I have uh, <laughs> mucus running down my nose. Uh, now, uh, the question was clenbuterol, right, and mm -hmm. anxiety. Clenbuterol really doesn't cause anxiety. You know, when you first take clenbuterol for the first two weeks, you get a little shaky. And I don't even know what causes that, to be honest with you, because it's not really a stimulant. It won't keep you awake at night. Um, it does. It, I think it traumatizes the nervous system a little bit. But after two weeks, you could take a clenbuterol and fall asleep. So I don't think it's going to make anxiety worse. Um, obviously, I don't know how bad your anxiety is. So, but I haven't seen it like make. I think once again, get through the first two weeks, and, and the way you get through the first two weeks is take a half a tab, take take ten micrograms twice a day, get used to it. Once the you get used to it after two weeks, then you can up your dosages, and you shouldn't have any problems. Let's go to Daja or Deja Cassett. Dave, your opinion on pre-exhausting a muscle? Example: doing thirty reps of hamstring curls before squats. The burn in the hams is real when squatting. Also, overload tricep before close grip bench and so on and so forth. Pre-exhaustion, okay, really is doing a like a shaping or concentration movement to give the muscle some fatigue, so that when you hit the main movement, you know, like if you, let's let's say dumbbell flies or or cable crossovers before you do bench press. It doesn't mean you should do 30 reps. It means you should just do that exercise first. So if you do, if you do normally do cable flies at the end of your chest workout, do it first. Still stick to your 8 to 12 reps or whatever range you do for those. Use good, good weight where you can really stimulate the muscle. Don't go insane because you don't want to fatigue the muscle too much. And then go to your uh, main movement like bench press. You know, sometimes people do leg extensions before squatting, that kind of thing. It doesn't mean you should obliterate the muscle so that you can't even move it's a pre-exhaustion so that you when you get to the main movement you don't have to go quite as heavy and you can still get the same effect out of the, out of the movement that's what pre-exhaustion is you know someone uh just on another note someone sent me an email saying look you recommend three sets two warm-ups and a main working set for each exercise what if i did four i said how about you make your third set which is the working set so severe that you don't want to do a fourth set and he said, you know what? I never thought of it that way. And the truth of the matter is, is too many people, when you have too many sets, what you're going to worry about more is what's the next set? What's the next set? You shouldn't want to do a next set. Do less sets. Put more intensity into it. Let's go. We got a couple of uh, Kevin Lavroni related questions. We'll take the first one from Stan B. I'd rather listen to George Farah's secrets in Egyptian Arabic while submerging in the bath of a... Okay, we're getting a little too uh, descriptive there. Anyway, I would like to know what the response was when Kevin Lavroni walked out onto the stage. It was hard to hear on the stream what the response was. Was it like a standing ovation or was there a bit of a silence due to the leg size? Lavroni is a legend and a champion in my book. Hope that he had a recognition. Yeah, the, the fans went crazy. You know, they did go crazy. He did his routine, and there was like a stand at the end when he, I think he talked on the microphone a little bit. They all, everyone stood up. And uh, the press conference, you know, people gave him a standing ovation too. So uh, I think people really loved having him there. It, it added a level or, or a layer of excitement to the show that it just never is there. Uh, and, you know, even though he didn't look like we all wanted him to look, I think people still got their money's worth, so to speak. Just the fact that he was there. Just to see him up on the stage with everyone. That's what we wanted to see. You know, will he come back and look even better? I don't know. I don't know what Lavroni's capable of. I guess he's going to try, from what I understand from the interviews I've seen that he's done so far, he is suggesting that he will come back in 2017. We're getting a lot of questions about that. So your feeling, Dave, you want to confirm it right now? 
If you had to make a pick, will Kevin Lavroni be back at the 2017 Olympia? I think he might be back before the Olympia, to be mm. honest with you. I think he might even consider doing the Arnold. Uh, I think he feels like he didn't have enough time to train his legs. He only had eight weeks because he had some kind of a knee injury. I fear that once he starts training regularly and not and you know getting back to doing what he doesn't do all year round, which is train all year round, I think he might start getting more injuries, especially at 52, especially because Kevin trains heavy. Um, let's see. I mean, I don't think Kevin would come back again unless he thought he could do some serious damage. I think he's really pissed off that Phil Heath kind of like was dissing his legs a little bit on stage. I know people were saying, oh, Phil didn't do that. Phil did. Phil gave him a few jabs on that, and that's all right. That, that's good for business. You know, if, if it inspires Lavroni, it lights a fire on him to train harder and come back better, then hey, it's great for us fans. So um, I, I don't think it was disrespectful to Kevin. You know, Kevin, Kevin put it out there that he was coming for these guys and gunning for him, and Phil's like, hey – I'm here, you know, take me out. So uh, I hope Kevin comes back just for the sport, you know, but if he can't come back better, then he should he should just retire again. Patrick's one has a follow-up about almond milk, said last time you said that it wasn't good for you because of the vegetable oil it contained. He wants to know if you have a similar or different opinion if it's organic uh, almond milk. All organic means is that it's grown, the, the almonds are grown in organic conditions, meaning no pesticides or, or fertilizers that are artificial. It has nothing to do with the ingredient list that they put in the almond milk. So that's a big misnomer. People ask me about organic eggs or organic fruit. It just means pesticide-free. It doesn't mean that, there's, that the actual fruit or the actual egg is better for you. It's not like an omega-3 egg, which has uh, you know omega-3 fatty acids in there because they fed the chickens flaxseed. So don't get confused by the term organic. All organic implies is that there's no pesticides or fertilizers used. And I don't even know if that's... I don't even know if I believe in it, but, you know, that's what they're saying it is. Let's go to our Facebook page. Last time I got a bit of a tongue lashing because we didn't take any of the questions from Facebook, so we'll do that now. Let's go to Simon Johansson. Dave, I wonder what your thoughts are about mint. Simon from Sweden. You know, speaking of uh, you taking flax, Sid, I, I've noticed that you were a bit of a celebrity at the Olympia. Uh, a lot of people were that. coming up and actually asking to take pictures with you. Is that Was that a strange uh, phenomenon for you? It was actually but in all honesty it, it was humbling and i appreciate it um I, I think the coolest thing dave just now that we're on this point that i got from the fans you know during the olympia during the olympia expo is that many of them came up to me and said that two months ago i hadn't even heard of you guys but now i'm hooked and they love the fact that we're giving them information on a weekly basis they love the fact that we have so much pre-Olympia content that they didn't even, you know, know what to do with it. Many told me that, you know, they were backed up for days and days trying to catch up with all our interviews. So that was cool to see that, you know, not only are people aware of what we're doing, but the fact that, you know, they're consuming what we're putting out. And again, I put this in the forum last night. So if you are on the Muscle Central forum, if you're not, go to the register now. Uh, your feedback is what drives us. So if you tell us, look, this is what you want. You want this guest on the show. You want Dave to rant about this, Dave or John Romano. You want thoughts from Dave, John, or Chris Aceto on a particular topic. Let us know. I mean, this is why we're doing this. But again, it was great to see uh, the turnout that we had, some of the feedback, some of the fans that we met. It's humbling. It's flattering. But it, it continues to drive us to produce quality content for you. Also, you know, in the last four weeks, we've gotten 15,000 subscribers to our YouTube channel. And, I, you know, I put out the, the, uh, the call to arms. Guys, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you watch this content, then you must like. If you like it, subscribe to the channel because I wanted 50,000 views. Uh, 50,000 subscribers. We got that, and now we're past 60,000 already. And you know what? In another thousand, we'll be we'll have more than any other bodybuilding and fitness media website out there. So, I'm going for 62, 63,000 right now. After that, we're going for 75, and I want that 100,000 so we I can get that silver button plaque on my wall. <laughs> and you know, because I know we have the fans out there. I know we have the people who love the programming. You know, if I like a programming on YouTube, I subscribe to it to let the people know. So, guys, do that. Now, the question was meant. Yeah, uh, which it seems to be a question I've been getting a lot. Ment is methyl uh, nor testosterone. That's what it stands for, M-E-N-T. And uh, it's a compound that doesn't uh, aromatize, you know. Uh, and I think that it doesn't uh, – excuse me, it doesn't convert to DHT. Excuse me. It does aromatize. The interesting thing about <laughs> ment is that it's very anabolic. Uh, it has a strong anabolic effect. Obviously, um, that's desirable. Now, I don't know a lot of people who have used it. 
But I, I did interview that guy, Anthony Hughes, from EnhancedAthlete.com, and he seems to be selling it. I don't know how he's doing it, but he's selling it, I guess not for human use, on his website. And he uh, is a big advocator of it. He claims that it works great, and he feels really strong on the stuff, and he's putting muscle on it. And so a lot of athletes have been asking me about it. I guess in theory it's good. I mean, if you have hair loss issues, you know, and you don't want any DHT, it's probably a good compound to try. I don't. The dosage is about 100 milligrams every other day that people have been recommending. Um, so in that sense, it's like kind of like Masteron or, or, or Trenbolone. Um, give it a shot. I mean, I, I guess if, if you get a good source of it, it should work theoretically on paper. I don't know anyone practically who's used it, and I've never used it because it's a relatively new pro compound. It's, it's Trestolone is, is the actual uh, chemical name of it, not to be conf confused with Trenbolone. It's Trestolone. So try it out. Let me know. Give me your feedback. You know, I, I think, it, like I said, it sounds good on paper. Let's go to our YouTube questions right now in the chat room. Let's go to Mark W. Hate the show more than Stevie B. Hates paying employees. Given how well Rami looks Saturday, do you think he will be the one to dethrone Phil next year? I think he will be the one to dethrone Phil. When it happens, I don't know. Um, I thought that at the night show on Saturday, he pushed everyone in that lineup really severely because he was nice and full. Prejudging, he was flat. Okay, and I think that hurt him, especially being a big guy like that. It, it just ruins his shape. When he's full, he looks round, and he's and he's very dangerous. Uh, he, I think he won the lat spread poses, front and rear. Definitely won the side chest. So I think he's a dangerous competitor, and I think his mindset is good, and I think he found a great coach in Chris Aceto. So I think next year he could be a super dangerous. I, I predict he'll win the Arnold Classic in March. Is he going to con – Confirming that he's going to be competing at the Arnold Classic? I don't know, but I'm, I'm putting it out there. It's okay. my next prediction. I'm going from Lavroni winning the Olympic. I'm going to, 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 to Big Rami winning the Arnold Classic. <laughs> let's go uh, Let's go back to the YouTube channel, Johnny. We have another question. Let's go to that. Uh, the Simple Dude one. If it's calories versus calories, calories in versus calories out as far as weight loss goes, why do some people have trouble getting lean on high carbs, assuming they are in deficit? Because calories in don't equal cal calories out. They equal that in a, in a machine. Humans are not machines. They're dynamic, you know, they're dynamic uh, beings. Uh, everyone's metabolism is different. It's dependent on hormonal makeups in the body and, and hormonal uh, environment. Uh, remember, high carbs, okay, stimulate a lot of insulin release. Insulin is a fat storage hormone. They've done studies where they've given, you know, obese people, okay, three, three different shakes to consume. So they basically say to these obese people, don't change how you eat, okay? Add these calories, and one group is getting whey protein, one group is getting maltodextrin, which is carbs, and one group is getting, you know, like soy protein. And invariably, every time they do this experiment, the group taking the maltodextrin get fatter and the waist circumference increases. The group taking the soy protein, nothing changes. And the group taking the whey protein, uh, they lose weight and they gain muscle. So foods have a drug-like effect on the body. Scott Connolly from the original inventor of Metrics called this nutrient partitioning. Certain foods were positive partitioners, meaning they caused the production of or the, the laying down of muscle at the expense of stored body fat as the fuel source. And other foods are negative partitioning agents, meaning they, they, they tell the body um, store fat. Okay, carbs, sugars, saturated fats are negative partitioning agents. Okay, essentials, good essential fatty acids lean sources of protein, okay, fibrous carbs. These are, uh, are positive nutrient partitioning agents. So the more positive partitioning foods you put into your diet, the more food you can consume and still build in muscle and burn fat, the more negative partitioning foods you put in, like high carbs, as this person suggests, the more likely you are to store body fat. Um, you know, if you, also, if you, t if you think about it, if you, give, if you give the same person, okay, the same diet and you change one variable, the only variable is you give them prednisone, okay, what will happen? They'll get fat. Okay, why would they get fat if you're not changing their calories or, or the food that they're taking in? Well, because prednisone tells the body it's a negative partitioning uh, drug. It tells the body, store body fat. That's all it does. And the same calories in that same person, okay, on or off the prednisone will be completely different. So we're not – calories are really irrelevant. It's macronutrient profiles. Let's go to Danny G90. Oh, we'll go back. I'm sorry. Uh, Leo, let's go back to the YouTube channel. Get me wet uh, my nose a little more, Johnny. <laughs> Mirko88 Fedor. Dave is drinking orange juice after workout with supplements. Really good or not, and why? You know, I haven't had juice, to be honest with you, since probably when I was in the hospital, they gave me some apple juice. But I, I, juice is like the worst thing. It's the biggest waste of calories. It's just sugar. 
even even fresh squeezed juices, you know, coming from fruits, it's sugar. It's pure sugar. I don't put juice in anything. When I mix my protein shakes, I mix them with water. Now, if you're looking for extra calories because you just your metabolism is ridiculous, that's a different story. But I think there are ways to calorie. I would rather eat some starchy carbs than have like a sugary juice. We'll take one more from the YouTube channel. Or I'll do, let's go. Okay, uh, Johnny's going to display the next question. Uh, go City, your opinion on DMAA. I know a lot of people use these in these pre-workouts and these neural focus <laughs> products. Um, my problem with the DMNAs is that uh, it's not legal. It's it's out there, but it's really not a legal supplement. I I, I don't like these supplements. I'm telling you that, that that mess with you know stimulation in the brain. I think you know if you think about what happens, what does it take to really stimulate the brain? It it it, it takes an increase in neurotransmitters. How do neurotransmitters get increased in the body? Well, you can inhibit their breakdown, or you can cause them to be st stimulate the body to produce extras. Most of these products stimulate the body to produce extra, okay? And in doing so, you exhaust these neurotransmitters. And when you exhaust these neurotransmitters, some people call that adrenal fatigue. It's really not adrenal fatigue. It's just neurotransmitter fatigue, okay? You get listless. You get lack of motivation to train. Uh, you don't feel as good. Uh, your workouts start to suffer because remember the neurotransmitters enable the muscle cells and nerve cells to communicate. It also enables the nerve cells to communicate with each other in the brain. Thus, if you exhaust them, you can get depressed, or your workouts can suffer. Okay, or you can create you know an overabundance of anxiety in the body and just and just not feel good. Remember, if you don't feel good, you're not going to train well in the gym. So to get a little burst here and there. Uh, you know, from these products is okay once in a while. It's when you use them on a regular basis because people become dependent on them, and that's when they cause problems. And you know what? I found, and I've talked to a lot of people about this, I don't use stimulants anymore. I stopped using them. I used them when I used to diet. I would drink a lot of coffee, really. I didn't really use any stimulant products. But since I stopped drinking coffee, I don't need it anymore. I don't need coffee to wake me up, Okay. Life wakes me up. You know what I mean? I, it, it's, we, it's a weird phenomenon. When you don't drink coffee and you don't use a lot of stimulants, or caffeinated coffee at least. I drink decaf. Um, you, you, don't, you don't rely on them anymore. It's, it's an amazing phenomenon. Try it. I, pro, I challenge anyone out there who's a stim junkie, get off the stims. And I'm telling you, it might take you four weeks, but in four weeks' time, you're going to thank me. Let's go to Danny G93. We're on Instagram now. Our handle is official underscore RX muscle. Let's go to Danny G93. Uh, Dave, Danny here from the UK. Did you think Nathan Diash's placing was fair? I had him uh, between 8 and 10. You know, Nathan Diash, along with uh, uh, Dallas McCarver and Justin Compton, were in that rookie newbie class, I call. And they all looked pretty damn good. Um, I think the judges, I think Nathan looked a little, how would I say this, artificially enhanced in certain areas. And I think that might have hurt him a little bit. Um, you know, I know everyone pumps themselves up in certain ways and, and gets their, their muscles jacked up, but I think he did a little too much. Um, I didn't, and I thought he lost some of the dryness that he normally has on his body. The, the fact is he's got such big arms and shoulders anyway, he doesn't need to do anything like that. It kind of threw his symmetry off, I thought, a little bit too. So in that sense, I, I think that, you know, no one would have complained had Nathan been 8th, ninth, or 10th. Um, I think it was very close. Uh, I thought Justin Compton and him matched up really well. I'd like to see them against each other, like in, in in some upcoming pro shows in 2017. I think they'll be, they could be the future of the sport, along with Dallas, obviously. Dallas is a lot taller than those guys, but Nathan and Justin really, really match up well. Once again, it was his first Olympia. You can't really expect too much, you know, when you're going in for your first time. Let's go to Omar ADNALJ. Dave, any there's two part question. We'll take the first. Any tips on managing cravings? Look. You're going to have cravings when you're dieting. It just goes it goes without saying. What I tell people to do is find something that's non-caloric that you like, whether it be some diet soda or you like coffee or um, what else? Did I, I'm trying to think of some of the little tricks that I would employ when I was dieting. Um, usually, you know, what I would do is I would try to find good spices because good spices to foods make the foods much more enjoyable. A lot of guys just boil their chicken. And they just eat it like plain like that. And you know what? It's not as exciting. You know, find some spices that don't have carbs in them. Uh, I like adobo or um, Mrs. Dash or a combination of them. Uh, you got to get creative. You know, create taste so that your body you know, can get away from these cravings. The worst thing you can do is give in to the temptation, though. 
What I would do if I would start getting really crazy is I would get out of the house. Leave the house. Walk out of the house. Go for a walk or get in your car. Go for a ride. It's not that long, contest prep, okay? When it's over, you can eat whatever you want. If you cheat, however, you got to live with that regret when you get on stage and you stand next to someone who's in better shape than you are. So to me, that was never an option. So I never cheated, you know, unless I had a prescribed cheat meal. And his second part is uh, training advice after recovering from a double-torn bicep tendon. Um, train carefully. <laughs> I don't, you know, a lot of people tear biceps in the gym because they're doing crazy stuff. If that's what happened to this person, then become a smarter trainer. You know, use your muscle injury as a way to train better. You know, if I would have known what I know now when I first started training, I probably would have saved myself a lot of grief and a lot of injuries over the years. Um, I learned most of my proper training technique after I got injured or had shoulder arthroscopic surgeries because I had to use perfect form after those surgeries so I wouldn't re-injure it. And what I found was that I grew better when I did that. And my strength actually increased when I used the muscles right. So... You know, the best thing you can do, and I hate, you know, it sounds very amateurish, but get yourself a personal trainer when you first start working out. Learn the right way. Find a bodybuilder who's got good technique and who can explain it well. I have people who come in and, and, and pay me to do leg training sessions, back training sessions with them. I don't train people in the gym, but I will on, on a once, once in a while occasion. I have people flying from other states, Dave, I want you to just train legs with me for the day. Fine, let's go to the gym around the corner for me. We'll go to Bev's. We'll do legs and, you know. I charge them whatever, and, and, and they learn how to do legs, and then they never have to worry about it again. So find someone who's going to teach you the right techniques. Let's go to Professor underscore Gaines. Hi, Dave. Hate this show more than Kai Green hates getting straight to the point. I've heard some bodybuilders talk about synergism between Trent and Winstrol in particular. Can you explain this as it pertains to pre-contest use? I don't necessarily know if there's a synergism, a synergism between Trent and Winstrol, as much as they're both hardening agents in the sense that when in a, on a lean body, Winstrel and, and Trembolone will make a hard body harder looking, okay? If you're not, if you're fat and you take Winstrel and, and Trembolone, it's not going to do anything for you. It's not going to lean you out. Hmm. Uh, so in that sense, you know, one of the, my favorite, you know, combinations pre-contest is Winstrel, Trembolone, Testosterone, and even Masteron mixed in there. That's a really good pre-contest mix. And a lot of guys like the Winstrel and, and Tremble on acetate because it's fast acting. And, you know, I, people know that, you know, I recommend guys take it every single day the last seven days before a show because the su stuff works fast. It gets into your system in high amounts, and it really hardens up the body. But once again, it's important that you be lean. It's not going to lean you out. It's going to make a lean body harder. Fat underscore Tony. Dave, is there a difference in injecting GH sub versus intramuscular? You know, they're both – acceptable routes of administration. Uh, there's been research that shows that the intramuscular route, which is what I usually recommend people do, it gets in faster, okay? Because it enters the bloodstream faster. Whereas when you put it sub-Q under the skin, sometimes it gets trapped in the fat cells, sometimes it gets lost. But it gets in eventually. It's just slower. Let's go to Matthias Viegas. If you were... Actually, no. Let's go to Merely Darren. Kevin Lavroni was from an era where conditioning, symmetry, and granite hard vascularity was the standard. So does Phil Heath advance that, or in your opinion, has bodybuilding gone into regression? I think bodybuilding goes in stages. I think, you know, the bodybuilding world is only as good as who's competing, you know. So uh, we've seen eras where there was just an enormous amount of great competitors, and then there's been, you know, dry spells. I think we're coming into a, an age where we're going to see some amazing physiques again. Uh, the introduction of Big Rami, Dallas McCarver, Justin Compton, Nathan Diasha. These are going to be the stars of the future, and they're going to be really good, these guys. I think before that, we, hit, we had a dry spell from probably when, when Ronnie retired to when Jay retired. You know, I think that was a dry spell. I think Phil took over. He was, like, uh, he was kind of like special, and then, but there really wasn't anyone else there. It was a lot of older guys. I think now we're seeing guys coming into their own, the Rodins and the Wolves and the Dexter still around. They're good, but I think this new crop is going to be great. But I think it's going to take another f three to five years before we see that, and I think we're going to have a little bit of a golden era. And yet, don't forget we have Cody Montgomery's, and some, there's a lot of you know, this uh, Abaraji guy. Uh, there's a lot of new guys coming up that are young in their 20s that we're going to see be the future of the sport. 
Brooks Clark, hey Dave, why is estrogen seems like why does estrogen seem like it's in everything? Plastics, deodorants, shampoos, and many other hygiene products. Will using these products negatively affect you in the long run? When they say there's estro estrogenic compounds in these things, it's not like you know you're producing oodles of estrogen like from testosterone. It's aromatizing. They're in there. Somehow they're in the environment. They're getting incorporated into plastics and they're getting involved. They're getting into you know, animal feed and stuff like that. Um, you know, some people are saying that that's why the, 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 the world or the men of the world are becoming feminized. It's from all this estrogen that's in the environment that's getting incorporated into their bodies through the foods and the, uh, the, the stuff we come in contact with. I don't necessarily know if I go along with that. Like when people say, oh, don't, don't eat soy. It's got estrogen and it's going to make you estrogenic. I don't believe that. I, don't, I think that's a crock of crap, to be honest with you. I do think that there's environmental estrogens. I don't know how they're getting there necessarily that could affect, like, a growing boy or growing female. Uh, I think adults are kind of immune to that. Uh, so I wouldn't get all... I wouldn't get all worried about the, oh oh my God I can't eat this food or I can't I can't use this plastic cup or I can't do this because I'm going to get estrogen in my body that's not going to happen believe me taking a shot of testosterone is going to get you a lot more estrogen in your body than than, than using a plastic cup. <laughs> Let's go to Muscle underscore Machine Dave. My question is what is the difference uh, between insoluble and soluble fiber? That's a good question. Uh, first of all, you need both. Um, as you know, my fiberized product from Species Nutrition uses both. Uh, you need a lot more soluble fiber than you need insoluble fiber, and that's important uh, to understand. Soluble fiber, okay, uh, is something that when you mix with water, it, it can absorb the water. So if you think of oat bran or oatmeal, when you put water with it, it, it sucks it up, all right? That's what you need a lot of. The best source of so uh, soluble fiber to use in the body in a supplemental form is psyllium. Psyllium is actually eight times more potent on a gram for gram basis than, than oat bran. So you get a lot more bang for your buck and you can use a lot less of it. That's why we use I use it in Fiberlyze. Uh, psyllium will, will bind up bile acids so it lowers LDL cholesterol, which is, that's how your body gets rid of it. It will increase uh, uh, mobility in the intestinal tract so it'll help you eliminate waste faster, get toxins out of the body. It also tells the liver to stop producing glucose, which lowers uh, insulin amount uh, uh, levels in the body. Lower insulin means better fat burning, so it's a great supplement to use when you're trying to lose weight because it keeps insulin levels lower, uh, which is something that we want, obviously. It's more efficient uh, for fat loss. Um, soluble fiber, on the other hand, will help remove waste from the, the colon. It actually acts almost like sandpaper in scraping the waste out of your colon. It will also alkalinize the colon. Uh, what does that mean? That means that it neutralizes acidity. If you think about what's going on in the colon, it's a pretty acidic environment. It's pretty disgusting, right? Well, the immune system doesn't work in an acidic environment. Uh, the the soluble, excuse me, the insoluble fiber will alkalinize, neutralize that acidity, helping the immune system to work better. Less chance of us having any kind of like colon uh, cancers or any kind of polyp formation. And on that note, that is going to do it for this episode of Ask Dave, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com, available right now on rxmuscle.com and the Rx Muscle YouTube channel. Dave's thoughts on Kevin Lebroni's return to the Olympia stage, interview with Danny Hester, Jeremy Buendia, Tom Platt, all our expo interviews and post-Olympia wrap-up available right now rxmuscle.com and the rx muscle youtube channel johnny styles is going to be flying out to spain tomorrow to cover the 2016 arnold classic europe so all the pre olympia uh, pre arnold wrap-ups of uh, wrap-ups preview video videos athlete interviews and of course the post show wrap-ups are going to be on rxmuscle.com and the rx muscle youtube channel for dave johnny styles i'm sadiq Faruqi. we'll see you next time